Hey guys and welcome back to another video and I hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today as promised on the last video on this topic which was to integrate Sonoff devices with their original firmware on Home Assistant. Today we are going to see an option which is to flash with this motor and then opt which one we want to use. There are pros and cons on both sides. Now I'll share with you the hardware, the software and it's really easy even if you haven't done anything like this in the past. So easy, so easy. It looks like video editing with a tool that I know which is Filmora, the sponsor of this video and it's a software available for Windows and Mac computers. Really easy to use especially for beginners but with a lot of complex tools so if we evolve and when we evolve then the tool will allow us to evolve with it. It has a lot of filters, text, transitions, music, overlays and elements but if you find that those are not enough then there's a store with a lot more packs that we can enrich our library. Now talking about library, what I've got right over here is first of all the Sonoff and usually you see them like this inside a case but mine is open and it's right over here. This is the Sonoff Basic but you can do this with any other Sonoff. So in terms of hardware we are going to need a Sonoff. We are also going to need this FTDI uh, board which I will leave a link down below something like seven years or so and we are also going to need this kinds of cables at least for the way that I work. This is very uh, cheap. I did purchase them a few months ago when I was uh, taking care of my setup and I needed a few contacts simple to use with some of devices as well and I will leave a link down below. I'll try not forget to leave the link down below. Now in terms of connections what we are going to do is use four of that uh, kind of wires and I'm going to connect to the board and the board has uh, six connections but uh, they are identified and we are going to use four and those four are VCC and ground and then TX and RX and that is it and here on this small FTDI boards I'm not able to show here on the son of board as you can see some letters right over there the ground I, I cannot read but hopefully you can ground VCC RX and TX and the way to connect is ground goes to ground uh, FCC goes to FCC TX goes to RX and RX goes to TX one way or the other if you do any mistake on these two the only thing that will happen is that it will not work so you will be able to check out something's not work and you are going to change it now regarding the jumper right over here uh, we will select the jumper on the three volts and basically that is it all i need uh, more is a usb cable which i've got right over here and channel ready to Roll. Now in terms of software, let's take a look at the screen. We are going to need three situations, but really, really simple. First of all, we are going to need the Tasmota software. By the way, credits uh, for all these guys and community, which is just awesome. And first of all, the Tasmota, uh, you just need to scroll down for, actually this is the latest version at the time of the recording. If you watch this video in a couple of months, then probably there is another version. Now, what we need to do is just go down and the one that I downloaded is the uh, general, if I can say so, which is the Tasmota Bean. But if you want any other language, then you have available. For example, my uh, main language is Portuguese and it's right over here. So if I want in Portuguese, I just download Portuguese. Once we have downloaded this one, we will need the ESP Easy software, which I will leave a link down below as well. Credits for uh, right over here for the TDRR. And basically, we will need to download as well. And uh, it's right over here on the latest version. And just download the zip file. That is it. And then Termite, finally, we will download. At least this was the version that I did download. I don't need to install it on my computer. It's just a, a, a package which we will open as you will have the chance to see. And that is it. And honestly, very, very easy as we will have the chance to see, which is right now. So we are going to connect the uh, uh, Sonoff through the US, through the FTDI uh, board and the cable. By the way, Home Assistant integration, we will do that on another video, not today. Today, just the flashing and see how it is working on our network. So to connect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button here on the Sonoff and I'm going to connect my USB cable and as you heard probably the sound of windows and turn on uh, uh, a light right over here so it is working now by curiosity and just by curiosity because we can have more than one device connected so let's go to device manager and in here let's check out the COM ports mine is connected on COM 
3. So this is a nice info so that's I'm sure that I'm working with this board right over here. Now what I'm going to do right now is to unzip the or extract the ESP Easy package and once it's unpacked uh, I will open this package. I will throw in Dita's motor bin file inside and I'm also going to extract the uh, termite and besides extracting I'm going to put it on the same folder just for the ease of use and recording the screen and so on uh, and this way I only need one folder. So right now we are going to use the flash easy file or uh, executable and we are going to select our com port which is three as we saw before firmware it will detect the firmware that we have inside the folder so we will select this one if we have more than one we can select any other and press flash and there we go as we can see it's already working and this will take roughly one minute or so you can see the lights right over here green lighting uh, just means that everything is working the way it should Okay, so the flash is finished or complete. So press OK, press OK. And what we are going to do right now is disconnect the USB and then connect it, but without pressing anything. So let's connect to make this sound once again. And right now, what we are going to do is to open Termite. And I'm going to use Termite just for one reason, just to know some information, as you will see. And this is the best way that I've found, um, because some people are a bit scared of this kind of software and not using it to write code, I think it's the easiest one. If you are a more advanced user, then you can check out a little bit more advanced tutorials and so on and so forth, but this is just the way. And I will explain why. Now, the only settings that I'm going to change right over here is uh, the COM just to see uh, if it's correct, and it is. And right over here, I'm going to select 11, 5200 and press OK. And that is it. I'm not going to touch it anymore. Now I'm going to search for a um, Wi-Fi connection of Mitas motor, which is right now sending the signal of the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to connect to that Wi-Fi directly with the TAS motor, and it will take me to this page, which means that I'm connected to the TAS motor right now. And what I want to do is to connect the um, son of device with the TAS motor firmware to my network. And I'm going to scan for Wi-Fi networks and it's going to see the Wi-Fi networks that I've got. I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to put my password right over here, which is a Spirador for this um, network. And I'm going to press save. Aspirador, by the way, it's the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and I'm going to press save and there we go. Now, one of the questions that you might ask, Robert, why are you using the Termite software? And the only reason is that I could do everything on the termite, not using the web interface. But as I said, sometimes it's scary for some beginners. And as you can see the screen right now, the Tasmota uh, inside the Sun Office is working fine, it's connected to my network, but I don't know the IP address where it is. Now I've got a few chances and I can go to my router information and see the IP address through the MAC address of the device and so on and so forth. But if we have termites open, uh, as we can see, while we were doing things on the network, it, he was sending a few messages right over here, reading everything that uh, he was doing. So the only thing that I need to look for is IP address, and the IP address that I've got is this one right over here, 192, and um, I can just copy it right over here, go to my browser, and then paste, and bam, we have the son of a son of basic connected with the Tasmota firmware and I can just turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. So it's working, everything it's working. And just one more thing for those of you that are more advanced. Yes, we could do everything here without going to the network and connecting. Uh, we just need to, to it's over. I'm just explaining a second situation. We could do two commands, which would be SSID1 and then the name of my network 
press enter and then uh, next we could say password and enter it would do everything but i do believe that this is a more fun way to do and we can understand what's going on on the background that's so on and so forth actually as you can see uh, we were connecting and disconnecting the device on and off and termite is reading uh, when it's turning on and off so the device right now it's ready connected to my network what i can do is just unplug everything and then connect to the outlet that i want and just control the light or control the pump or whatever i want to control it normally but without the son of uh, firmware using the Tasmata firmware. Guys, hopefully this video was helpful and easy to follow, especially for those that are beginners in this kind of situation, firmware flashing and so on and so forth. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.